Great heavens, we're busy with a technique called completing the square. Completing the square is specifically for getting to maximum and minimum values. When you are in the form AX minus B squared plus Q, that will always be your maximum or your minimum. And when we get to parabolas, the formula for a parabola will also be able to be written in this way where you will be able to see your turning point. So the technique still has to come exactly into place where we get to that. But for completing the square, there's a technique at play. So if we want to complete the square, the rules are there. If the coefficient of the x square is 1, which is the easy examples that we started with, then we can take the coefficient of x, which is 9, and we can do a certain technique with that. Now if we take the 9, and we times it with a half, and we square it. Always, if this x squared coefficient is 1, we take the coefficient of x, which is now plus 9, times a half and square it, and we get to an answer that we're going to be adding into that. So I always write it separately and say x squared plus 9x, shove that 36 a little bit to the right hand side, we're getting to 9 over 2 squared, which gives me 81 over 4 that I'm adding in there. And this will be the trinomial that will factorize into being a complete square. When I factorize that, it will be a complete square. But then I have to legalize it. If I've added the 81 over 4, I must also subtract the 81 over 4, because remember this is an expression. So in this expression, if I add something, I've got to subtract it again to get to the original sum. But then this trinomial factorizes in the following way. So the trinomial factorizes into, in the first place, this x squared is square rooted to get just to x. The plus, the sign for the second term is a plus, will stay a plus. And then for this third term, we take the square root of that, which is 9 over. So then you have completed the square. This answer you still have to go work out and get me a fraction answer. Okay, I've looked at my calculator, just put into the calculator negative 36, negative 81 divided by 4, and you get this answer. You are done completing the square. What I asked you to do, you've done, completed the square. In retrospect, or for future, this is going to have something to do with the parabola, and if I ever ask you what is the maximum or the minimum value, it would be that number. Depending on if this a, in ax squared plus bx plus c, if this a was positive, then it's going to be a smiley face, meaning that this is going to be a minimum value of 225 over 4, negative 225 over 4, and you can write it any which way, negative 56 and a quarter. Okay, so let's do another one. When I have to do the completing the square, and the a value here is a 1, then I'm going to say take that x value. This x value's coefficient, which is 1. Take the 1 and times it by a half and square it, and you'll get to a quarter. Calculator. A quarter. So you'll say it's plus a quarter. To legalize that, because now remember this is what I'm aiming towards. That three term is going to complete my square. But then to legalize putting in a quarter, I've got to subtract another quarter. <clears throat> so that my answer here would be again completing the square. This would be square rooted in this binomial bracket. The second one's sign would be a plus. And then the third term, we take the, the square root of a quarter, which is a half. Then you go to your calculator and you say 2 minus a quarter, which will give you 1 and 3 quarters if you want. Or the calculator will give that to you as 7 over 3. Because you take it to a calculator answer. 7 over 3 is fine, 1 and 3 quarters is fine. But then that again now would be your, because it's positive, you've got a minimum value again for your parabola. So the minimum value is 7 over 4 or 1 and 3 quarters. So if I take that exact sum, where I just said complete the square, complete the square, and I now make it an equation, and I say solve this equation by using completion, completion of the square. 
First things first, you always have to have a program. If I say solve for x, you're going to go through the motions. If it's quadratic, put it equal to zero. Done. Try and factorize. And if you try and factorize it, you don't get factors. No, you do, I think. So it's 1 times 1 and 1 times 2. So if I cross multiply, for 1 cross multiply, you get 2, you get 2 plus 1, and it doesn't factorize. Because look, if it's x minus 1 and x plus 2, the factors, this doesn't work. Minus 1 times 2 is not plus 2. So it doesn't work. So that would have been your motion. Try and factorize, it doesn't work. What would you do then? If it doesn't work, you go for the quadratic formula. That's your basic notion that you've got to do with quadratic equations. But now the sum said, use the completion of the square. So if you go to the formula now, or even if it did factorize and you factorize, you've got to do completing the square. So to complete the square, we've done it there already. We're again going to say, let's just move the x squared plus x a little bit separate from that plus 2 and put it equal there to 0. So the sum is still exactly the same. You go and you say, if this is 1, I take that 1. Time and put a whole bit square, it gave me plus a quarter. It's the same sum. To legalize it, I'm going to say minus a quarter. But now, since I'm in an equation, I could have said, let's go and say plus a quarter on the left side, plus a quarter on the right side. That's the difference if I'm not busy with an expression, but with an equation. So then I would solve for x by saying x squared plus, sorry, x square rooted. The sign is a plus, half is the square root of a quarter. And then this answer, which was plus 7 over 4, got to be my answer. Now if I came to this point, the question said solve for x. There's the x I'm trying to solve. So I want that x alone. I forgot my square. I want that x alone. So I'll take that x alone by first of all taking away the 7 over 4 to the other side. Then I'll take away the square by square rooting. Then I'll take away the half by minusing it. But this particular sum worked out to a non-real answer because when I take the x plus a half square, I take that 7 over 4 to the other side. It's something that can't happen. Something square can never be a negative. So you would write no solution, no real solution for this sum. But if it had been a positive, you would have then square rooted both sides, then said minus one on the other side, and you would have solved for x. Let's solve another equation by completion of the square. So first of all, we have a bigger problem now than what we used to have, because that a or the value in front of the x squared the coefficient is not 1. You have got to sort that out. Now you've got two options. You can either take the 2 and divide throughout by it, and this will be 5 over 2, and this will just be 5. I want to show you, if it wasn't an equation, you would have done exactly the same thing and said, take out a 2. And now if I say take out a common 2, it's not precisely right, but I want that to be a 2 so that this can be a one. So I'm forcing it to suit my needs. I need that to be a 1. But there isn't a common 2 to take out. That's not what I'm doing. I must make sure that this is still the same question. And this is the tricky part. So you've got to ask yourself, 2 times what will give me negative, first of all, and it will give me 5. If it's 5 over 2, 5 over 2 times 2 will give me 5. So that's the solution for that part of the question. You have to take out a 2, and then this will still be minus 5x. That 10 bothers me. I need to put it there on the edge. If it was an equation, like I said, the same sum would apply. So whether it's an equation or it's an expression, please do it the same way that you won't get confused. I'm just trying to help you in there. Now I need to know what's going on here. So it's getting worse because of the numbers and because of it being fractions. So I took out the 2, making sure that this was a 1. Because only now can I take the coefficient of x. The coefficient of x that I'm going to use is not going to be negative 5. It's going to be negative 5 over 2 once this is a 1. So what is negative 5 over 2 times a half and square will always be a plus, because a square root is a plus. And then that answer is 5 over 4, which when I square it, is 25 over 6 t. So the moment I write the next line, you're going to say, no, wait, wait, man. 
you're going to legalize this and you're not legalizing it correctly. I'm going to say, and then you say, what, 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 what happened here? What did I actually put into this sun? Because I'm putting it inside this bracket and the bracket has been multiplied with 2. So I'm not really putting in 25 over 16 that I've added to the sun like in the previous one. So I can just say minus 25 over 16. I actually put in 25 over 16 times 2, which is either 50 over 16 or 25 over 8. Do it on the calculator. 2 times 25 over 16 is 25 over 8. So I have to subtract 25 over 8. That's a little bit funky. You have to think about it. You did not put in 25 over 16. You put it in a bracket that was multiplied by 2, so you actually put in 25 over 8. So that's why I'm subtracting it as well. The rest of the sun goes according to the plan, so this will still stay 2. This is the completion of the square, where this is square rooted, the sign is negative, and that one square rooted is 5 over 4. Then when I add that together on my calculator, it gives me negative 105 over 8. Just do it on your calculator. So whether this was an equation, or it wasn't an equation when I erased it equal to 0, this would have been full stop completing the square. But if I say solve for x, I need to find this x alone. So to find the x alone, you've got to do it step by step. There was minusing, squaring, timing, and minusing again. So you've got to get rid of that 105 over 8 first, take it to the other side, making it 105 over 8 positive. Then I've got to get rid of the 2 by Dividing by 2 because it's been timed with 2, the bracket. So to get it away, I've got to divide by 2. If you divide this by 2, you're going to get 105 over 60. Take your calculator, divide by 2, or times by 1 over 2. Times by 1 over 2 gives you the 16 at the bottom. Then to get the square away, which didn't happen in the previous sum. To get the square away, you've got to square root. And here comes the thing. If ever you've got an answer like x squared is 9, and you have to square both sides to get the x alone, what did you have to remember? Plus or minus. So x is not just 3. It's either plus 3 or minus 3. What square is 9? Not just 3 squared, but also negative 3 squared also gives you 9. So the moment you put the square root there, which is going to happen here now, the moment you put the square root there, you've also got to put the plus and minus there. Don't forget about that. So then I've got square and square rooted and x minus 5 over 4 is left. On that side we have 105 in a square root over 4. Can you see what happened there? Both of them are inside the square root but the bottom one is a perfect square so it can come out. The root of 16 is 4. Leave the 105 at the top. Maybe it can even simplify but that's beside the point. Then to get your answer, you just need to get rid of that minus 5 over 4. So it's going to be plus 5 over 4, plus minus the root of 105 over 4. And you can put it on one big um, fraction and say that that is equal to 5 plus or minus root 105 all over 4, which should remind you of the quadratic formula. So minus b plus minus the root of b squared minus 4ac over 2. And that's the reason I usually write it with the root at the back. Nothing wrong with writing the root in the front and putting plus 5 over 4 at the back. Also, this is fine to leave it this way, especially if the question said leave your answer in third form. If the answer said leave your answer to two decimals, then you have to type in one with a plus, get an answer in decimals, the other one with a negative, get the answer in two decimals.